the new Telangana Secretariat, who is going to be occupying that office, that is what is going to be determined on the 30th of November and the person who is in charge of the entire operation to determine who will occupy that is the Chief Electoral Officer, Mr. Vikas Raj. Uh, the most significant thing now this election seems to be that 669 crores now since the time that the Model Code of Conduct came into effect. What explains this? Tighter vigil, better coordination between the departments, whether it is central or state government, focus of the election commission on this. I think that's primarily it. Out of about 1760 or 1780 crores in the entire country, 669 is from Telangana. Uh, you know, all politicians, political parties agree that the south of the country is always much more expensive to fight elections than the north of the country. Is this correlation also to be seen in the same manner? I don't know. I am. Uh, I don't know what is happening in north, but. Uh, uh, see, we have seen the Karnataka election, we have seen now our Telangana election. So, uh, uh, we definitely see some trend here of uh, higher uh, Caesars. As I, as I said, uh, it looks like my understanding is that this is because of better coordinated action by the ECI. And uh, going into details, uh, planning better. So, primarily that's what it is. Okay. Um. You know, most political parties say that just like there is no last minute cramming, political parties are also prepared well that the money would have been moved already into the constituencies much before the elections happen. And yet you are seeing these kind of numbers. Should we think that most of it perhaps is not related to poll related expenditure as it seems to turn out in uh, several other elections earlier to this? Not really. See, most of the money which is not claimed immediately. Safely, we can assume that they are related to elections, especially the cash part, the liquor part, the drugs part, mostly the drugs part also, freebies definitely. Gold, we'll see. That's uh, still happening. We have to see, I mean, uh, what exactly comes out of it. But the rest of the things, I'm quite sure that the bulk of it is election related. And. Is there any correlation to the parties that you are able to make as of now? I understand that investigations would not be completed, but uh, you know, how do you also ensure that there is a fairness or appearance of fairness, perception that you are being fair because there is a ruling party here, there is a ruling party from the centre and there is a Congress which is in opposition in both uh, the centre as well as the state? No, for fairness I would rather look at it from the point of view of where the source is. See, I mean, we, we have been very clear from the beginning itself that all my check posts, NACAs, SSTs, everything is being covered under IP cameras. And these cameras are being looked at at a central location, uh, RO's office, DO's office. And we have, uh, uh, we have invited the political parties, the, the, I mean the candidates and their representatives also to come and look at it if they feel like. So the transparency is coming there. So I, I would I would definitely say that it is an absolutely fair process. Give us an idea of the scale of this operation, of uh, the vigilance itself, the enforcement agencies which are looking at the cash transfers in mind. Okay. See, we have uh, about 20-21 departments of the central and the state government. Of course, the major ones being the police, the income tax, the central GST, the state GST the excise department, the narcotics, uh, primarily these and then of course uh, uh, supported by uh, various other uh, departments uh, like transport, railways, airlines, um, related uh, departments. Uh, so uh, that is as far as the departments is concerned. Now coming to the number of people who are doing it, uh, if I I mean, see, the, the, there are the border check posts, then there are the check posts that have been put by the police, uh, then there are the, of course, the flying squads and the SSTs that are there. And in addition to that, of course, uh, uh, surprise checks being done here and there by various departments like, uh, like uh, income tax doing its own thing, some places, uh, central GST doing its own thing, state GST based on their intelligence. These people going and checking up things, similarly excise department going and checking up things. So uh, definitely uh, huge number, I mean definitely not less than uh, 
about 2000 uh, uh, is the number i don't have the exact number right now with me but about 2000 teams and squads will be working at any time and the borders are also because there has been allegation that you know uh, some narcotics or other kind of substances could be coming across the border from this side and money perhaps from a karnataka or a tamil nadu there is no correlation like that we have seen the border check posts we have seen the uh, catches so if you see uh, which districts are getting the maximum amount of seizures the number one is rangareddy and then uh, there is hyderabad then there is of course uh, um, nalgonda is there suryapet is there uh, then uh, there is uh, um, uh, medchal malkajgiri so uh, the borders is not really uh, as much, I mean, what what you are saying is not, uh, doesn't look like. Uh, okay, the correlation seems to be more to the candidates and to the more economically prosperous uh, areas of the state. Also, now that we hardly have four days to go into election, tell us about what kind of arrangements do we have, the personnel moving in, the ballot boxes, what, uh, not the ballot boxes, the uh, machinery that is used now for uh, the uh, voting itself. Today and tomorrow, actually, the setting of EVMs is going on, the commissioning. Uh, after the set, second randomization, this is of course uh, uh, done in presence of the political parties. So they have had a look at it and then of course this time as you know for the first time we are doing home voting, we are doing uh, voting in the facilitation center for the government employees who are going to ultimately do the duty. Uh, so these are there are a lot of firsts this time so that is happening there. and. Uh, uh, the poll parties are already, uh, they have been randomized and they have been put into groups. Of course, the final allocation of the polling booth will be done by the observer on the day of the poll, on the day of the disbursement, I mean distribution. So, uh, we are ready with the poll parties. We are, uh, our EVMs will be ready by tomorrow. Uh, by and large, the training is already over. So, uh, maybe a few doubt clearing session will be done. And of course, the teams will be there at the distribution center to clear any further doubts uh, that the presiding officers might be having more so in view of the fact that uh, in certain constituencies this time we are having uh, three or four ballot units that are going to be used because higher number of candidates which specifically may be those lb nagar is having four uh, three uh, three multiple are there seven of them are there i don't remember the numbers right now and uh, the names right the now. number of candidates may be more that's where the uh, yes. units become yes the, the moment it crosses 31 number of candidate it becomes three uh, ballot units so. okay also for the clarification for our viewers uh, there are specific colors that are related to each of these parties which are in the fray do the ba to the evm show it up in color format or are they always black and white if there was a symbol no it's black and white see election commission basically the symbols that they give is basically all black and white Okay, and this home voting that you spoke about for elderly people as well as people with disability, how uh, how many people have you been able to reach out through this home voting uh, process? My number today is about 20,000 uh, for the home voting and about 44, 45,000 for the facilitation center. That means the uh, government employees who are going to be doing the duty. Uh, I have about 27,000 people who have been targeted for home voting. So I'm hoping that we will be getting quite a substantial percentage of them, uh, uh, we will get them to vote. Okay, just one last thing, uh, you know, even after the scrutiny happened, there were uh, some cases that came up saying that this person has given different uh, kind of data or declared different things in the affidavit over the years, 2014, 2018. Doesn't that ever come into your purview because the common person is asking, why can't the CEO actually take action even after a scrutiny, if it has come to light that so perhaps a person declared something else in one affidavit and it is clearly not in line with what he's saying now. I mean the simple answer to that is the election commission orders are like as far as the affidavit is concerned he's supposed to fill everything that's what my RO is supposed to look at whether everything has been filled or not. The veracity of uh, that data is something that uh, uh, is not uh, uh, something that uh, we can look at that point or we are supposed to look at that point and decide. I mean, uh, the second part of it is that, uh, see, whenever election petitions are filed, you, are, you, you have seen how long it takes for it to be decided, which basically means that whatever claims or counter claims are made are again, again, they are uh, disputed by the parties which are affected. So therefore, it's a, it's a, it's a long process and, uh, uh, and then it cannot be uh, suddenly decided in such a short time. So. Uh, 
uh, that's the justification of that. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, the Chief Electoral Officer is certainly ready with uh, whatever the preparations that are required for this massive exercise on the 30th of November. In Hyderabad, with camera person Nagraju Masudhir, NDTV.